Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and thanks for tuning in to my 2013 Gmail video series. This is the first video of the series and is going to serve as an introduction and an overview of the user interface. This Gmail video series has been my most requested video series since I did my 2013 Google Drive video series which I'll link in the description. Uh, so I know a lot of you are looking forward to this. I had a 2012 version that was a, a huge success, but it's just a little bit outdated. And that was only one video. So this is going to be about four or five videos initially. And then I will also provide additional videos as Gmail is updated throughout the year here in 2013. So I hope it helps and enjoy. Although I'm not going to walk you through the actual process of setting up a Gmail account in this tutorial, if you don't yet have a Gmail account, head on over to gmail.com and then go ahead and click the red button in the top right corner that says create an account. You're going to have to give Google some basic information and then your account will be set up. So once you have your account set up, when you first log in, it is going to look something like this. I actually just created this account today for this tutorial, so this is the newest version of Gmail with all the bells and whistles. So as I mentioned, this tutorial is going to be about the user interface of Gmail. So when you first log in, you're in your inbox. And you know that because if you look over here to the left, you've got all the different locations of Gmail listed and inbox is currently highlighted. The number next to your inbox is the number of unread messages you have in your Gmail account. So you can see I have the number four next to my inbox and inside of my Gmail I have four unread messages. If I click on one of them to read it, you'll notice that the number changes to three. Even though I still have four emails in my inbox, one of them is now read. As you can see on the right where my emails are listed, an unread email is shown by being bold but when you read an email, it is no longer bold. So that's how you can tell if you've read an email or not. Now I would like to show you quickly over here on the left, this starred feature. What this is, is this is a way to quickly mark your email. So you'll notice that next to your emails in your email list, you've got this little star location. If you click it, it turns yellow. If I then go ahead and click on starred on the left, it's going to show me all of the emails that have the star. So like I said, it's a quick way to mark your emails. You can kind of use that feature however you like. Important messages work very sim similar to starred, although there's a slight difference. You'll notice that next to my emails I have this little label icon. And if I click on that, it marks that conversation as important. And you'll see it turns yellow just like the star. If I click on important, it will show me all of my messages that are labeled as important. So what's the difference between starred and important? Well, important learns as you use it. So as you mark emails important, Gmail will look at the sender of the email, the subject of the email, and the more you do it, the more it will learn, and it will try to automatically mark messages as important when they hit your inbox if they feel as though it's a message that you manually would mark important. With starred, it's always manual. You have to do it yourself. Gmail will never automatically do it for you. Sent mail are obviously messages that you've sent in Gmail. Drafts are emails that have been composed but not yet sent. I'm going to go over the details of composing messages, organizing messages, and all that sort of thing later on in this video series, not in this actual video, but I am going to quickly just compose a message. And I'm just going to put in to test at example.com. You can see that the user interface of Gmail when composing a message is pretty simple. And I'm going to put in this is some test content. Now, first of all, if you look over to the left at my draft section, there's already a number one next to it. That's because Google automatically saves your emails as you compose them. So if your computer were to turn off or you were to lose power, you would have an email that you were in the middle of composing would be saved and you could go ahead and open it up to continue. You also notice that down here at the bottom, right of this email, it says it is saved. If I were to type a little bit, go ahead and watch this bottom right part. If I were to just type a word, you'll see now it says that it's not saved. Give it a second, it says saving, and it is now saved. If I then wanted to get rid of this message, I could just hit the discard draft button. If I wanted to send it, I could obviously hit the send button. I'm just going to discard it for now. You'll notice that there's this section called circles over here to the left. These are 
people that you have added in Google+. So if you want to learn more about Google+, go ahead and check out my video specifically related to Google+. But if you actually add contacts in Google+, they will show up underneath this circles section of Gmail. So you could send an email to people that you've circled on Google+. Again, if you want to learn more about that, please see my tutorial specifically dedicated to Google+. And then if you click on this more drop down, you're going to have some more sections. So chats are archives of chat conversations you've had with people. So you can actually chat in Gmail, which I will cover later on in this video series. Um, you can, you know, this is the chat section down here. It's kind of hard to see on my screen. But if I let that more section pop back up, you can see I could search for somebody to chat with. Well, in this chats section, the history of all your chats, if you enable history to be kept of your chats will be located there. Pretty useful. All mail is the black hole of Gmail. If you have an email in your account and it's not deleted, it's going to be in the all mail folder no matter what. So if I click on all mail, you'll notice that all of these messages are in there. They're also in my inbox. And later on in this video series, when I talk about organizing your email, I'm going to talk about how you can get emails out of your inbox, yet keep them in the all mail folder. But just know for now that if you can't find an email, you're going to do two things. You're either going to look in the all mail folder, especially if your account's new and you don't have that many emails, or you're going to search for it. But if the email is in your account, you are going to find it in the all mail folder. It has to be in there or else it doesn't exist. Before I move on, I do want to mention that you'll, you've probably noticed that as I've been mousing over this section, it keeps popping up and dropping down and it gets kind of annoying. One way to fix that is to go over this chat section at the top where you see three little dots that are very hard to see and where your mouse turns into this icon where you've got an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. When that happens, you can click and you can drag this section down so it will stay down at the bottom, which might help you when navigating in your Gmail. The next location I'd like to talk about is spam. Obviously, those are messages that have been marked as spam. Either Gmail has marked the message as spam automatically because it has its own spam filter, or if you receive a message and it is spam, you can hit this little report spam button that looks like a stop sign with an exclamation mark. It will go to the spam folder and it will add that email address to your spam list. So if you get another email from that same user, it will automatically go to spam. Trash is where emails go once they have been deleted. Just a friendly reminder here, emails will be permanently deleted from your account if they have been in the spam or trash folder for more than 30 days, so keep that in mind. Now I want to show you a quick little trick. There's something that I like to do with my Gmail account, and that is these locations, all mail, spam, and trash, are locations that I access a lot. I don't like to have to click this little more drop down to see those locations. So what I generally do is I click on them, and drag them up to the top and just drop them anywhere in this area up here, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you'll see that it moves up there. I usually do that with spam and I also do it with trash. I tend to leave chats down at the bottom because I don't use that section all that much, but that's up to you. You could also drag that up to the top. And I'm gonna shrink this circles section so we can see our screen better. I'm going to go back to my inbox. A couple other locations I want to show you in this introduction user interface tutorial. First of all, at the bottom left of your email, you can see how much of your email you have used. You can see right now I'm at 0% full using 0 gigabytes of my 10.1 gigabytes. It's going to take you a long time to fill that, so if you just opened up a new Gmail account, I wouldn't worry about that too much right now. At the top left, underneath the Google logo, you'll notice that there's this Gmail dropdown. And this is where I can access my contacts and my tasks. So if I click on this, you'll see that I have two other sections, contacts. This is where all my Google contacts will be listed. Now there's a few ways a, contacts, a contact gets in this section. Either you can click the new contact button, which I'll talk about later on in this video series. Or you'll see there's a section down here called most contacted. If you go back and forth emailing somebody, they will automatically be added to your contacts. They're obviously not going to be in a particular group, although you could create a group, as I'll show you later on in this video series, and add them into that group. But if you just randomly emailed somebody, you didn't add them manually as a contact, and you want to know their email address, you could go in here into the most contacted or the other contacts section of your Gmail account and find that person's email address. Tasks are another aspect of really Gmail and Google Calendar where you can 
add to-do lists. I have a specific tutorial on that that I did last year, so if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. There haven't been too many updates with the tasks list thus far in 2013, so I'm not planning on doing a particular tutorial for that at the moment, but if it's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments section, and if I hear enough response looking for that, I will definitely create one for all of you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out this tasks list and I'm going to go back to my Gmail folder. I have just a few more things I want to show you on this initial screen and just getting around here in Gmail. And now I'm going to move to the right side of Gmail. At the very top here, if you added a photo of yourself when you first created your Gmail account, it will show up here. Later on in this video series, when we go over the settings of Gmail, I'm going to show you how you can add a photo or change your photo after the fact. But I also want to show you that if you click on this little arrow drop down, you will have the option to go to your account and view your profile. And I'll give you a little tip. You could change your photo right here as well as in the settings of Gmail. Now, I want you to understand that if you click on account, this is going to take you to your Google account settings, your global Google account settings, not just your Gmail. So that includes Google Calendar, Google Docs, any Google service you use. So be aware of that. If, however, you want to access specifically your Gmail settings, you're going to click on this little gear icon with the downward facing arrow below your profile picture you'll notice it says settings. First of all, we can control our display density, which means how compact all the stuff on our screen is. So right now you can see I'm in the comfortable setting. If I change it to cozy, you'll see things get a little bit closer together. And if I change it to compact, they get a lot closer together. I actually prefer the compact version because I can see more things on my screen at once, but that is obviously a personal choice and that's completely up to you. Going back to this drop down list, however, you'll notice that I've got a couple other options here. First of all, I can take the tour, which you can do if you want, but you're kind of in the Ants and Alex tour right now, so it's probably not necessary. At the same time, you could change the theme for your Gmail account. So that means you could change the background color, you could have certain images and, and photos there, but you can also access your settings. If you want to go through these settings by yourself, feel free to. It's your Gmail account, but I will be producing a video in this series solely dedicated to Gmail settings. So go ahead and look forward to that. I'm going to go back to my inbox here. And this is where I'm going to leave you with this video. Again, this was the introduction and user interface video tutorial for Gmail in 2013. This is just part one of a multi-part video series I'm going to be doing regarding Gmail here in 2013. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you get there quick enough, I'll try and add some of that information into later, later videos in this series. If this video was helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you today. It's Anson from AnsonAlex.com.